Good morning everyone, great to have you joining us again. Well done for making it through another week intact. We're, we're another step closer to being able to see friends and family a little bit more freely, which is a, which is a great thing. You'll notice that I'm recording up in the church grounds today. And that's because next week, next week on Sunday the 28th, which is Palm Sunday, we're going to be reopening the church building for a communion service. So we're going to be reinstating our 9.30 service. It's going to have all the, the usual restrictions, I'm afraid, that were in place before lockdown. So the wearing of face masks and social distancing limited to about 30 people, all that sort of thing. Um, but if you want to join us for that service, then you can book a place either through our website or if you've got the Church Suite app, you can do it through that as well. So you're more than welcome to join us for that. If you're a bit further flung, don't worry, uh, we're going to continue our online services. It's not going to be a case of either or. So, so they'll be running concurrently with, with that as well. So you can still sign online and join us for our online services. Even before next Sunday, actually, we're going to be opening the, the church building and, and the grounds on the 23rd, on Tuesday, the 23rd. It's, it's a national day of reflection. You, you might not have picked this up, but it's, it's, believe it or not, it's been a whole year since we went into the first lockdown. And so this is just an opportunity to reflect on what the past year has held, uh, maybe contemplate some of the lessons that we might have learned and, and just acknowledge how tough it's been in many ways and that the, the church itself is going to be open and there'll be an opportunity for you to have private prayer and just um, some space to reflect but also dotted around the church grounds there'll be little things to help you engage in that whole reflection process there'll be play, prayers dotted around the place all that sort of thing so that's beginning at i think from 10 o'clock and running well into the afternoon and you can come up and partake in that anytime you like back to today we are continuing our series as we think about what does it mean to, to live through a bad day and how do we do that well? What, do we, what lessons can we learn from Jesus? And, and this week, Richard's going to be talking about uh, the reality of actually just acknowledging our humanity and that we have needs that uh, we want met. And so the, the title for today is Be Human Enough to Acknowledge Your Needs. So if, if you've been through a week that you feel like, wow, it's just taken a few chunks out of me, we just want to encourage you to say, actually, you don't just have to put on a brave face and, and grin and bear it. You can come before God in honesty and say, wow, that, that was a toughie, God. I need some replenishing right now. There's that lovely verse in 1 Peter that says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And so that's going to be our, our launch point for today. So just put yourself in that place where you, you recognize that God cares for you um, and we'll, we'll pray as we begin the service. Father, we thank you for your care. Thank you that you love us. That simple but deep reality. And we pray, we want to hold our humanity, our frailty, our needs before you and ask that you come and meet us at that point, at our point of need. So breathe life and encouragement in us this morning, we pray. For your glory's sake. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another week of St. John's Online, our online service. It only seems like a week ago that we were doing the same thing. But here we are, and we are going to celebrate. Wherever you are, whoever you're watching this with, I pray and I hope that you can celebrate and you can let yourself go as, uh, as we do and we normally do in church. So this is our church and uh, I pray that you will celebrate with me. Let's pray before we, uh, before we start. God, you are our rock. You are our rock of salvation. Lord, we focus on you this morning. We focus on you and we lift up your name because you are to be glorified. Amen. Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord Still I will say Sing that again, every blessing Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise 
when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, where I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name When the sun's shining down on me When the world's all as it should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering Though there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Name, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give, you give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Oh, oh, oh. blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, oh blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Grace alone somehow I'll stand Where even angels fear to tread Invited by redeeming love Before the throne of God above He pulls me close with nail scarred hands 
into his everlasting arms when condemnation grips my heart and Satan tempts me to despair I hear the voice that scatters fear the great I am, the Lord is He. Oh, praise the one who fights for me and shields my soul eternally. Boldly I approach your throne. Blameless now I'm running home By your blood I come Welcomed as your own Into the arms of majesty Behold the bright and risen sun beauty than this world has known I'm face to face with love himself His perfect spotless righteousness For oh, a thousand years a thousand times Are not enough to see your praise Approach your throne Blameless now I'm running home By your blood I come Welcomed as your own Into the arms of majesty This is the art of celebration Knowing we're free from condemnation Oh, praise the one Praise the one Who made an end to all my sin But This is the art of Knowing we're free from condemnation Oh, praise the one Praise the one Who made an end to all my sin Who made an end to all my sin an end to all my sin Boldly I approach your throne Blameless now I'm running home By your blood I come Welcomed as your own to the arms of majesty Let's sing that again Boldly I approach your throne Boldly I approach your throne Blameless now I'm running home By your blood I come Welcomed as your own to the arms of majesty Into the arms of majesty oh, Into the arms of majesty
I approach your throne And blameless now I'm running home Cause by your blood I come We're welcomed as your own Into the arms of majesty Into the arms of our majesty Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Father, as we praise your name throughout this service this, this morning, help us to grip onto those words. We're welcomed as your own into the arms of our majesty.
everyone. And um, a couple of weeks ago, well, actually, it's probably about last month, I mentioned about how we were going to be interviewing some of our church family. Um, and this morning we have Laura. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> hey, Laura. Hi. Good um, morning, everybody. Hi, Amber. Um, first of all, I guess I just want to ask you, like, over the last year, who have you been doing lockdown with? Who have I been doing? Well, I've been locked down with um, James, my husband, who you've probably all seen, and Grace and Edward, who are our two children. Grace is 15, no, nearly 15, she's 14, nearly 15, and Edward's six. So, um, yes, we've been locked down together. However, some of you may know we have some lovely neighbours, one of them called Millie, uh, Millie and Adam with Ethan and Elise. So, and a uh, lot of chickens, I hear. Lots of chickens, yes. <laughs> always the chicken um so even though you know obviously we didn't really see each other but we could see each other outside and it was lovely to have them there to help you know we helped each other with online shops if because you know what online shopping was like initially it was yeah it was crazy so if I was if I managed to get a shop in you know it was always Millie do you need anything and vice versa so um although we were locked down as a small family together it was lovely to have the support network of um Millie and Adam just next yeah. door so yeah definitely and and over the last year generally what have your weeks looked like what's the general week look like for you oh well I've got to say <laughs> every week <laughs> is completely different um obviously initially when the first lockdown happened last year I think like everybody all routines went out the window um and everything just stopped so all of a sudden we had time but having Grace and Edward at home and the homeschooling we soon developed our new sort of new routines um with homeschooling daily walks etc I think the main topic of conversation of the day was what's for dinner tonight and um, (laughs) the most exciting day of the week was probably uh when the food shop arrived (laughs) so excited Um, so but so but yeah back then I said life was it was it was so much more simple and and actually it was beautiful in a way it was lovely because everyone stopped and it was and it was lovely but it didn't last long did it because of uh, um we then went back to I went back to work because all our work stopped James and I both work in an industry where James is in the performing arts industry. Um, My business, um, I've got my own business providing um, classes for uh, parents and babies from newborn all the way up to five years. So that that stopped completely. Um, And then so the weeks then, when we started uh, back in September, the weeks became busier, getting back to work, preparing for that. Um, And now moving forward again we went through another lockdown weeks changed again I can't tell you every week is so so different now the children before back in um earlier in the year the children were back at home and my days were it was just homeschooling Edward it was bonkers the school were amazing in in providing um, in providing all the work but I would have to sit with him from sort of nine in the morning till till the afternoon till three or four sometimes it was really full on so then everything that I needed to do kind of went out the window and I'd end up working in the evenings um, because he needed my support as well as Grace but then now they've gone back to school and the days are just very busy preparing for hopefully going back to work in April um and and get and I seem to be doing things for the church every single day this week. <laughs> so I, I've got to say week by week, every, some, there's something different, something yeah, something changes. We're trying to keep in it. Obviously, we're in a routine with the kids going to school, but um, yeah, every week is is so different. So once we go back to work, hopefully, in a couple of in next month and James in a couple of months' time, we'll be back to some sort of normality. Yeah. And so your work at right at the start of it completely stopped. Then yes. kind of what happened after it started picking up again? Yes. So, um, well, it completely stopped. It was the 17th of March. It was, so it was just, I decided to close the business. It was just before the whole country locked down because it just didn't, it didn't feel right. And where we were, where I had parents with young babies, it was just, it just didn't feel right. So I made the decision. We I closed on the 17th of March and immediately I thought, ah, what do I do? These, I've got a responsibility here. I've got all these parents with some of them with brand new babies and then then there's just nothing. And that's, you know, my job is to support those parents. 
Um, so I took everything online um, initially. So um, created support networks online via Zoom and the classes that we teach, which include, it's a lot of multi-sensory storytelling, singing, signing, baby massage, baby yoga. Um, I took it, yeah, so I took it all online. So initially I did pre-recorded classes that parents could watch at any time at home, which was lovely. Um, and I did that more or less throughout the summer before we then, I then was able to take the classes back in September. But in order to go back, it was very, the classes were very, very different to how we left them pre-COVID. Um, obviously the, you've got the, the, gov the government provided all these guidelines that we had to work towards. Every class had to be COVID secure. A social distancing needed to be in place. Um, I had to invest in a lot more kit or, you know, things, fabric couldn't be used. Every single prop that we used um, was single use only. So everything had to be cleaned. No one could share anything. It was very, very different. Um, and it was, it was quite sad in a way because of the classes that we provide. I have my own venue um, down at Priory Farm in Surrey. It's a beautiful enchanted indoor enchanted forest. And you're used to seeing all the children playing together, the parents talking together. Um, and all of a sudden I wasn't able to, the children couldn't come and sit on my lap. Um, the we had to try and encourage children to stay apart because we weren't, we're not a nursery. Um, um, however, when we did go back, we really, we tried to turn the whole the whole situation to a real positive. So although the parents were on their own, were sitting singularly on their own, sort of, you know, a good distance apart, we really try to encourage that one-to-one -one play between parent and child or parent and baby. So, and actually to see that happening because you couldn't chat to the parent next door, you know, uh, parent, uh, the children had to stay on their little islands with their parent. All of a sudden, as a teacher, you would see this beautiful interaction between parent and baby that I'd actually, in, in five years of teaching those classes, I'd never seen before. Oh, wow. So real positive that had actually come from, that had came from, sorry, actually having that social distance in place, mm -hmm. although it, didn't, it felt quite alien and, uh, and, you know, a bit lonely and not very nice at the beginning, it actually it was still beautiful because it actually just encouraged the parents to actually really focus in on their children and not worry about anybody else, you know, not have a chat, not chat about, Oh, I've got to do this or I've got to do that. So um, with the person next door. So that was, that, so that was lovely. So obviously we went back, classes looked like that, which was very, very different, um, but still, still beautiful. Um, and then we, uh, we locked down, we went into lockdown in November, didn't we? Um, for a few weeks so mm -hmm. again it closed and it was just as we'd opened up a new term and it was I was like ah what do we do so that time we took everything online okay. again but this time on zoom so we did live zoom classes instead of the pre-recorded which was great but it was hard work with as you guys know doing everything at St John's mm -hmm. with all the editing and oh, it was crazy we um, we took all the classes online uh, sort of via zoom and did live classes which was which was lovely and, and we've been doing that ever since so um at the moment i'm doing zoom classes twice a week um trying to reach out to as many new parents as possible because you've got to think there's so many parents out there that have had babies in lockdown some of them that have not even met another parent yet who's you know uh, other parents um babies are missing out on interacting and seeing each seeing one another um so it's although it's not the same it is really lovely to get people together um on zoom which just like the church has done as well it's i think it's been a bit of a lifeline mm. uh, and now we're just keeping everything cross week and return in april yeah that is amazing because you have just because i'm like your like your page on facebook i've seen little like updates and things and it is amazing actually how you've been able to create community in this yeah. time for people who have uh, one of my close friends had a baby in September so you can kind of like see actually how hard it is for those new yeah. parents and, and how isolating it can be in lockdown and actually you've managed to create a community for a lot of those people which has been yeah. amazing it has been um yeah it's been it's been lovely to do and I think 
and the bit I, I didn't I do feel such responsibility there to make sure that there is still that we are still supporting them um, and we're bringing people together because that's so so important mm. but what both James and I do obviously James working in the uh, the arts industry and with what I do it's it's always we do bring people together you know whether James is you know singing uh, at parties or weddings or now on driveways I've been doing something very similar with my work I've been going and doing doorstep uh, doorstep dry, uh, p- birthday parties for like 20 minutes with all the puppets yeah uh, and it just I think it's um that what we do is that it does bring it does bring so much happiness and that's yeah. the industry that's unfortunately really been affected by this pandemic mm. um and I think I think as communities as well we really we really miss that you know yeah. mm. music fun we miss being able to you know get together um so it's been it's been tough but I've been determined not to give up and um <laughs> it's been amazing yeah yeah <laughs> I know, we'll keep spreading those magic sprinkles everywhere yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about your Facebook page. It literally is just like sparkles everywhere. It's just so much joy in it. <laughs> it's great. Um, yeah. And so you're hoping in the roadmap, it's, it looks like April that you'll be able to. Meet yeah, well, at the moment, they're saying that um, they're hoping to, yes, stage two, they're hoping to release us in stage two on the 12th of April. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've got lots of people saying, oh, when can we book? When can we book? But after last year, I think, think you know I can't be too careful I don't want to open bookings now and take payment from people when the government when Prime Minister hasn't actually confirmed um, Mm -hmm. and I believe at the moment he's going to confirm on the 5th of April Mm -hmm. that businesses can return um, on the 12th so um, I'll be waiting until then until I can open bookings um, because it's in terms of administration and managing bookings we've got I was just before, well, even, yeah, in lockdown, I had, when we went back to classes, um, I had over 400 parents coming per week. So you can imagine when that cancels, um, but the demand has gone up even more. I've got so many more than that, even on the wait list. And I can't fit everybody in because Mm. the classes are running at half the capacity because of social distancing. So myself and the teachers are having to work double the time to just even try and meet the normal demand, let alone all the extras mm. so it just shows that, that parents are desperate to um yeah to get back and yeah. uh and with their little ones yeah definitely so that's definitely something we can be praying for is you going back in april and um, is there anything else that, as a church we can pray for i think i think really um to pray for every every not just just me and uh, and james that have been and my family that in terms of our work and going back but everyone in that industry that's been affected whether it's hospitality the arts um you know there's different you know company directors that you know have com- their businesses have com- been completely shattered by this mm-hmm. and we're working so hard to try and get back and I think let's yeah pray for that we will be able to go back in April that um hopefully hopefully it, we won't be locked down again and um, all the businesses out there that provide so much happiness and joy to to people and support um, can actually survive and and come back. Mm. Um, that, yeah, I think yeah, that's. Definitely. And one thing I just want to say as well, Laurie, is I'm so grateful that you managed to you guys managed to come to a few services last January before we went into lockdown, and then. Oh. It's, but it's been so great to have you on like Zooms and like just different things that we've been doing, oh. and also that. Um, when we met up for a picnic last summer all those oh, sorts of lovely things. yeah it'd be really nice to still be I have to say, when um when we did join last year it was, I think it was January February time obviously we didn't get to meet everybody um so you've, you've obviously probably seen my face on zoom now singing with James and bits and pieces but um the the church has been so so welcoming um to us as a family when we joined last year everyone is so so friendly um and welcomed us with sort of you know open arms no one you know when when we came to um because we'd actually been coming along to services the odd services um since about 2015 but then um we started we thought no this is something we really really want to do at the beginning of last year and everyone was just so lovely 
so lovely so um thank you for having us it's been it's been brilliant and we love it so and, thank you for having us and the fact that you are in meetings every day this week says that you are really well and truly in the church family i know <laughs> i know and you guys are going to be seeing james on bingo with johnny next week amazing <laughs> night so um <laughs> you're gonna be retreat I'm sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> amazing thank you so much Laura it's been really great to chat to oh, you no Amber thank you so much see, see you soon bye. bye today's readings are taken from the good news bible John 19 verses 28 to 30 the death of Jesus Jesus knew that by now everything had been completed and in order to make the strips, the scripture come true, he said, I am thirsty. A bowl was there full of cheap wine, so a sponge was soaked in the wine, put on a stalk of hyssop and lifted up to his lips. Jesus drank the wine and said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and died. Our second reading is taken from Hebrews 4, verses 14 to 16. Jesus, the great high priest. Let us then hold firmly to the faith we, we profess, for we have a great high priest who has gone into the very presence of God, Jesus, the Son of God. Our high priest is not one who cannot feel sympathy for our weaknesses. On the contrary, we have a high priest who was tempted in every way that we are, but did not sin. Let us be brave then and approach God's throne where there is grace, there we will receive mercy and find grace to help us just when we need it. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. In the church's calendar, today is Passion Sunday, the day when we, we look back and we reflect on Jesus' momentous decision to turn his face toward the cross that he was prepared to follow his father's plan and go all the way to the cross, whatever it meant. Knowing that it would be difficult, knowing that it would be the most painful thing that he would ever experience, he went there because he loved us. Many of us have seen Mel Gibson's film, The Passion of the Christ, where it quite vividly and graphically portrays the pain and the anguish and the torture that Jesus went up to, went through in those few days leading up to his death. During Lent we've been looking at the seven sayings that Jesus uttered from the cross and today we're looking at the fifth one of those the simple statement, I thirst, or I am thirsty. We find it in John's Gospel, chapter 19 and verse 28. And this is what verse 28 says. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. So first and foremost, Jesus cries, I thirst, so that scripture can be fulfilled. Everything that happened in the life of Jesus is revealed. Everything that is necessary for us to know is revealed in scripture. And everything that Jesus did had been foretold, it had been prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years before. In fact, there are at least... 20 Old Testament prophecies that are fulfilled in the 24 hours around Jesus' death. By highlighting how Old Testament scriptures were fulfilled throughout the crucifixion of Jesus, John is showing us, John is pointing us as his readers to the fact that everything that happened was according to God's plan. You might have thought that things had gone horribly wrong when somehow the Son of God is hanging on a tree for something that he hasn't done, unjustly treated, wrongly accused. Has somehow, has the plan of God gone wildly wrong? But no, 
everything that he did is to fulfill scripture. God is sovereign, God is in control, and God's plan will come to pass. When Jesus cried, I thirst, from the cross, he was alluding to Psalm 22 and verse 15. That's the psalm that Julia referred to last week. In 22 and verse 15, the psalmist says this, My mouth is dried up like a pot's head, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. John had referred to the same psalm a little bit earlier in chapter 19, when regarding Jesus' garments, it says that the soldiers divided his garments among them. That too comes from the psalm. In response to Jesus' request for a drink, the soldiers offer him wine vinegar. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it. And they put the sp sponge on the stalk of a hyssop plant and lifted it up to Jesus' lips. In those days, water on its own wasn't really a, a very nice tasting drink to have. So they would mix the water with a little bit of wine because it made it taste a little bit better. <clears throat> Earlier in the crucifixion narrative, Jesus refused a drink of vinegar and gall and myrrh that was offered to him to relieve his suffering. And it was the custom when prisoners were being taken away to be crucified that caring people would offer them a drink of wine in a way they would to dull their senses so that they didn't feel the pain so much. It's a bit like a, a shot of morphine or something to make the pain not feel quite so acute. And at that time, Jesus refused the drink. And I think that's because he wanted to appreciate the full enormity of the task that God had put it before him. He didn't want his senses dulled to what the Father was calling him to do. Later on it says that the soldiers mockingly offered him a drink and then refused to give it to him. They teased him, they taunted him. But now, several hours later, it's now at about three o'clock in the afternoon. He's been hanging there since nine o'clock. So it's been six hours. He's been on that cross, hands held out, breathing up and down. When he breathes in, he has to pull his body up as hard as he can. And then he breathes out and it drops down. And he's, the, the pain is absolutely immense. <clears throat> Here they... He asks for a drink. This time the soldiers give him one. This was a fulfilment of Psalm 69 and verse 21, where the psalmist says, They put gall in my food and they gave me vinegar to drink. Immediately after receiving the drink, Jesus says it is finished. And then he bows his head and gives up his spirit. There's another very practical reason too. Why Jesus cries, I thirst. The Lord asks for a drink because he wants to <clears throat> he wants to clear his throat. He wants to be able to he wants to ensure that when he makes his next and final statement, he can make it loudly and clearly. He wants to declare that statement. It is finished. But that's next week's message. Have you heard the story about the chemistry professor, the caretaker and the kettle? Apologies to Roger Forster, who I heard this story from many years ago. But picture the scene. You're in a science lab and there's a, there's a Bunsen burner on the table and it's been there. And over the top of it, there's, um, there's a stand and on the stand, there's a kettle. The, the gas to the Bunsen burner is turned on and the light, the flame is lit and you can see the flame and there's a little blue triangle that sort of demonstrates that the gas is coming through properly. And 
someone comes up to the chemistry professor and he says to him, why is the kettle boiling? And the chemistry professor says, well, you can, you can see that there's gas flowing through the tube and that that's been, a flame has lit that and that flame produces heat and that heat heats the, that heat rises to the bottom of the kettle and it warms the bottom of the kettle and then through that the, the kettle conducts the heat and it goes through to the water inside the kettle and that water gets warmer and the molecules move more and more quickly to the point where that water is ready ready to, to turn into gas, to turn into steam. And you can see that because there's steam coming out of the top of the kettle. That is why the kettle is boiling. And then the caretaker comes into the room and they ask him the question, why is the kettle boiling? And the caretaker says, why do you think? Because I want a cup of tea. There are many levels at which we can appreciate God's word. And when we look at this question, I thirst, let me, let me first turn to the, <clears throat> the the deeper, if you like, the deeper explanation. Is Jesus crying, I thirst? Is it a, is it a spiritual thirst? A need for fellowship with God the Father. A need for a saviour. A need for a relationship. The Bible says an awful lot about thirst. It talks about the thirst of the soul. The desire for fellowship with God our maker. The desire to realise our chief end, which is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. That's Psalm 42 and verses 1 and 2. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you, O God, in a dry and a thirsty land where there is no water. Or Psalm 63, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there's no water. Here we have Christ, the eternal Son of God. He's enjoyed close fellowship with his Father for all of eternity, and along with the joy of uninterrupted fellowship as he walked this earth, fully God and fully man. That is, up until now. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24 says, He bore our sins in his body on the tree. A favourite verse of mine that I've spoken on before, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. God made him who knew no sin to become sin or a sin offering on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 2 says, Your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Jesus felt genuine separation from God for the first and only time when he became sin for us on the cross. That's why he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As we heard last week, could this be why he cries, I thirst? Is he in that moment of separation from his father? Thirsty for the fellowship that he's always known with his father, the fellowship that he came to invite us back into, the fellowship that Adam and Eve once had with God that they lost through their sin and disobedience. The word that Jesus used, the word that's used here for thirst is the same word that Jesus used when he met with the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well in John chapter 4. Now this woman had been married for five times and she was at that time living with someone that she wasn't married to. She was very likely an outcast among her own people. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Jesus asks her to draw water from the well. And then he says to her, if you knew who it was who was asking you for a drink, you would ask of me and I would give you living water and that you would never thirst. Again, there's that word thirst. In the same way, in John chapter 7, Jesus says to the multitudes in Jerusalem, let anyone who is thirsty come after me and let the one who believes in me drink. Jesus suffered the anguish and the thirsting for the presence and the fellowship of God his Father in the same way as we do. And he did it so that he might invite us into that eternal relationship. Secondly, was Jesus expressing a physical thirst? A simple expression of his humanity and need. It's possibly the simplest answer to the question, why, is that Jesus in his humanity was physically thirsty. The need for water, for hydration, is the most basic human need. Our bodies are, after all, 70% water. And the very act of breathing in and out, forcing his body up and down on that cross, would have expended so much of the, of the water that was in his body. He was genuinely thirsty. He really needed water to survive. Without water, we all die. Now there was a heresy going about in the early church at the time that John wrote this gospel and wrote his epistles that Jesus didn't really come in flesh and blood, that much less die a gruesome physical death on the cross. That John referred to that heresy that was going about in his epistles in 1 John 4 and verse 2. He says, Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And in 2 John verse 7, he warns the church, Many deceivers who do not acknowledge that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. And there are people today who will deny the physical nature of Jesus that he really was fully man as well as fully God. Christ's intense thirst, however, it reveals his humanity was real. In Christ, God became man. In him, the whole fullness of the Godhead dwells in bodily form, Paul tells us in Colossians. And scripture reveals that Jesus' real humanity it reveals that he is a man just as much as he is God. The Gospel records record that Jesus wept when he went in John chapter 11 and verse 25. He's at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. Lazarus has died and it just utters those simple words. Jesus wept. That's an expression of raw physical emotion. In Mark chapter 4, it says that Jesus slept. His body was tired, so he slept. And then in that passage I've referred to already in John chapter 4 and verse 6, it reveals that Jesus experienced fatigue. He was tired. Jesus, wearied as he was with his journey, sat down beside the well. Jesus also experienced psychological pain of mockery and ridicule. The famous passage in Isaiah 53 that <clears throat> refers to Jesus, it says he was despised and rejected of men. He was mocked, he was abused, he was spat upon, he was laughed at, he was scorned. Jesus 
encountered psychological, he encountered physical pain, he encountered psychological pain at all as well. He knew what it meant to be mentally tortured, mentally pressured. From all of this evidence, we can see that Jesus was truly man. We can state that in Christ, we have a God who really does understand what it's like to be human. We have a sympathetic saviour, one who is well acquainted with physical, psychological, social and spiritual suffering. As said in the <clears throat> reading we had from, from Hebrews, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but one who in every aspect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus knows what we're going through on a good day, on a bad day, on any day. This week is the first anniversary of the coronavirus lockdown being announced in this country. And I'm sure, like me, like many, many others, you've had good days, you've had bad days, you've had hard times, you've had times of close fellowship, but you've had times of real loneliness and possibly depression. And you've asked yourself, where is God in all this? But this these, this illustration, this evidence that Jesus was totally human, that he experienced every emotion that we've ever experienced, means that he's able to come alongside us and to offer us support and grace to help in time of need. If Jesus, the Son of God, was prepared to acknowledge his need before others, then what prevents us from doing so? Jesus' own example invites us to be honest about our struggles, to admit them to him, to share them with one another. For it's in our vulnerability and our expression of weakness and need that we discover the depth of his promise. My grace is sufficient for you. Jesus suffered physical thirst. And one final thought. Picture the scene. You're, you're at the foot of the cross. Jesus is hanging there on the cross. And you're at the foot of the cross. And you hear him cry out, I thirst. What would you do? I'm sure, like me, probably like every one of us, when you hear that cry, you would do everything you could give up everything you could to look to meet his need, to give him a drink. You'd look to meet his need. In Matthew 25 and verse 35 and the verses following it, Jesus says this, For I was hungry and you gave me something to drink, to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came and visited me. And when he's questioned about that, he says, for as much as you did it for the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it for me. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2 says, Carry each other's burdens and so fulfil the law of Christ. Let's look out for one another as, we, as we're vulnerable enough and to open up and share our need with one another. God bless you. Let's pray. I'm going to use some words from Psalm 100. 
Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It's he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So let's sit in the quiet for a minute and enjoy being in God's presence, knowing that we are his and he made us and we can trust him with everything. God, we thank you that you are a good shepherd. Thank you that we can trust you. God, we're sorry for those times that we don't trust you completely. We go through our days and we don't make you the centre. We don't focus on your goodness and we only see the problems. Lord, I pray that you forgive us and help us And help us to be more in step with you every day and a good witness to those around us that we can live out of the joy that you being in your presence gives us. Father, we pray for all the children who've been back at school had a full week back. Lord, we pray for them as you help them adjust to another change. Pray for teachers and parents and other support staff. We pray that you give them insight and wisdom to know how to support the students that are struggling. We thank you for education. And we pray that as we get used to being back to more of a routine, that you help us all to take time to have the conversations to support those that need encouragement. Lord, we remember further afield the people in Yemen, people that are struggling to find food and are displaced and separated from loved ones. Father God, we do ask that the British government can reconsider how they give their aid and what amount of aid they give. And Lord, I ask that you help us to be generous as you've been so generous with us. Lord, we pray as we thank you for the return to school. We pray for those people whose industries are not yet opened up. We pray for people who work in hospitality, who work in the performing arts, who work in all those areas where an expression of who they are has been curtailed by this pandemic. We pray that there is opportunity and occasion for them to get back to doing what they love. And thank you for all the great arts and creativity that we have that is an expression of who you are as a creative God. Lord, I thank you that you are good that your love endures forever and that your faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Hold me now in the hands that creates in the hands Find me now Where the grace runs as deep as your scars 
You pulled me from the clay, set me on a rock, called me by your name, and made my heart whole again. Lift it up, and my knees know it's all for your glory. I might stand with more reasons to sing than to fear. You pulled me from the clay, set me on a rock, called me by your name, and made my heart whole again. Here I stand, high and surrender. I need you now. I hold my heart now and forever. My soul cries out. Once I was broken, but you love my whole heart through. Sin has no hold on. Grace holds me now. And that grace owns the ground where the grave did. For all my shame remains left for dead in your wake. You crashed those age old gates. You left no stone unturned. You stepped out of that grave and showed me all the way. Here I stand, high and surrender. I need you now. I hold my heart now and forever. My soul cries out Once I was broken But you love my whole heart through Sin has no hold on me Cause your grace holds me now Healed and forgiven Look where my chains are now Death has no hold on me Cause your grace holds me now yes. And that grace Holds the ground where the grave did Thank you for For all my shame Remains left for dead in your way Crash those age-old gates You left no stone unturned You stepped out of that grave And showed of me all the way Here I stand, high and surrender I need you now Hold my heart now and forever. My soul cries out. Once I was broken, but you love my whole heart through. Sin has no hold on me, because your grace holds me now. Healed and forgiven. Look where my chains are now. Death has no hold on me. Cause your grace holds me now. 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 Healed and forgiven. Look where my chains.
inside now. Death has no hold on me, cause your grace holds that ground. Your grace holds that ground. Precious blood has left me forgiven Pure like the whitest of snow Powerful to make sin and shame retreat This covenant is making me whole So I will rise Lift my hand yes, For by His mercy My life was spared The highest name Has set me free Because of Jesus My heart is clean Purify my heart in your presence Teach me to discover the joy Of holiness that forms as you draw me close In you what was lost is restored So I will rise and lift my hand For by His mercy My life was spared The highest name Has set me free Because of Jesus My heart is clean Because of Jesus My heart is clean so I will rise and lift my head For by His mercy my life was spent The highest name has set me free Because of Jesus my heart is clean because of Jesus, my heart is Before we sign off today, I just want to raise a cheer for a couple in our church family, Bob and Sheila Foster. Yesterday, they celebrated their golden wedding anniversary. And I know, I suspect, given the restrictions, that it probably felt like a, a a paired back celebration but Bob and Sheila we hope you had a brilliant time that there was some opportunity to, to mark that with your family and we salute you so congratulations on your wedding anniversary let me just finish up with a prayer I'm going to read there's a little bit from Philippians 4 that again talks about God supplying our needs let me just dig it out it reads like this and my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus so as we finish up let's pray Father we thank you that you have an inexhaustible supply of riches in your glory and we pray that out of your amazing goodness that we will experience that reality of you supplying our needs and so we ask for your blessing on us the blessing of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit have a great week, everyone. Take care and catch you soon.